Welcome back to Dreams of the Nameless, where attempting to speak truth is becoming a crime in this dystopian moment. Uh, Russia has arrested Ivan Golanov, an investigative journalist whose work has been critical of corruption within the Russian government. Uh, in short, they're charging him with drug crimes, and according to an article in Politico that I found, uh, his editor said, We are absolutely certain that his arrest is connected to his work. He had been receiving threats over material that he has been working on. Uh, also, the Russian police had some photos on their website, which they first claimed showed his home drug lab. Um, all but one were later removed after the police admitted that the photos were actually of a different apartment. It wasn't even his house. So there had been a public outcry for his release also, and it seems unlikely that that's going to happen. Uh, according to the, the Politico article, less than 0.5% of all the criminal cases in Russia result in an acquittal. A pretty drastic number, if you ask me. So 95% of people who are accused of a crime are convicted of a crime? Um, 99.5%. Oh, yes. 99.5. I misheard yeah, so, you. So less than one half of 1% are uh, resulting in acquittal. I'm smiling because I don't know. I don't have any facts to, to back up this feeling. But that sounds to me like to, uh, at the risk of sounding like a repetitive uh, group of people here, is that's that's a pretty dystopian figure, isn't it? Yeah, I don't think you want your court systems to operate at 99.5% proficiency or efficiency, which I, whichever way you want. Well, to I mean, it. I suppose it depends on which side of the fence you're on, because if what you want is there to be no crime, then, you know, 99.5% uh, oppression uh, efficiency is pretty good. Try Russia, try Russian government, 99.5% efficiency. Now available in red. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's uh, that's a pretty stark number. I, I just the problem I foresee with that though is like we already have a prison population that's just insane. If our efficiency became greater, um, well, yeah. What's the what's the rate here? Oh, I don't know. I I know it's not that high though. Well, but that seems like a a data point that would have been great to know. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure, you know, it, there, there's a statistic out there that we could quickly just Google. Well, that's what I was hoping that you were going to do. Yeah, I mean, I can do that. Whitney's, Whitney's Googling it. Regardless of say, like, I can say it's it's far below 99.5. <laughs> it's got to be lower than 99.5. Yeah. Cause, I mean, but then again, like, how much lower is a number that doesn't sound depressing? I don't know, but I feel like 99.5 is a number that even Michelle Alexander would be like, wow, that's corrupt. Uh, you know. Yeah, that's not a social caste system. That's just your society is prison. <laughs> right. <laughs> the social caste are those who made it out of prison at that point. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's pretty stark, to say the least. And, and we're not there yet. Yet, being the operative, I think. <laughs> um, so, uh, last, lastly, uh, in the last summary of this article, though, the... Uh, the investigative head at their news outlet, uh, which had a name like Mezud or something I couldn't pronounce. Um, the system just doesn't have a reverse gear. Now that Ivan is in custody and charged with a serious crime, no matter how laughably flimsy the evidence, you can't just throw it away without these people admitting a wrong and losing face slash careers. Um, I think that's kind of the thrust of the corruption there is that even, even though the police flat out said... Yeah, these articles were fake or Oh, yeah, it was a frame or... job. Yeah. yeah, we framed him. Um, yep, oops. But, like, now that he's in the system, like, he's still just going to get ground up and, and thrown in prison or, or who knows what. Um, I suspect, and I'm sure they suspect it too, it said that in a very rare move, the judge actually released him to a, uh, uh, what do they call it, home sentence. He's, uh, he's not allowed to leave his house. House arrest. Um, don't know why I couldn't think of that. And... They they were just shocked, basically, the way the article put it. Nobody expected that to happen. So I wouldn't be at all surprised if, like, maybe they come to get him from his house and he's just not there anymore. <laughs> you know? Uh, but if he doesn't escape, if he doesn't find political asylum somewhere, like, yeah, he's probably going to prison at the very least. Um, so in that in that sort of vein... I guess what I'm wondering, you know, and I was kind of hinting at it already, but, like, can it happen here? Like, do you think that's even a possibility? And 
I guess as a second part of that, if it does begin to happen here, like what recourse do you know we the people like what recourse do we have against that to stop this kind of corruption? Well, I mean, it already is happening here. Look at the Assange case, um, mm-hmm. and look at what we're we are still actively torturing. Um, the I'm blanking on the name. Uh, connected to the Assange thing, the progenitor of that issue. Uh, yeah, I know who you're talking about. I, it's I a trans woman. Yep. Um, I, and the name's right on the tip of my head. Yeah. I want to say Cole, but like I know that's this not is it. The, this is, you know, if I leave this part in without cutting it out, this is the part where you watching, you don't know what it's like to be on camera, and then for whatever reason, your brain just decides that basic fucking concepts and names that were easily under your fingers five seconds ago... It, it does not matter how hard I sit here and I can squeeze and it doesn't matter. I'm not going to come up with the fucking name. Chelsea Manning. I lied to you. I lied right into your face. I guess all I needed to do was I just had to I just got to squeeze it out. And I uh, just Googled it. <laughs> um, so. <clears throat> and I, I the reason I didn't want to say I want to make sure is trans woman the correct. Descriptor, I believe. I believe so. I'm, I'm not a hundred percent on that though. Well, by all means, correct us if, if, uh, if I'm wrong in the, in the, in the, the, the uh, comment section below, I certainly want to use the appropriate terminology here. I'm just not entirely sure. Cause it doesn't, it, it's not an issue to me. I don't care. Um, what I do care about is that we've kept that person in solitary confinement, which is torture, uh, for preposterous lengths of time. So I don't know what this guy did in Russia to get the ire of the state, but I'm guessing it was probably similar to what people like Chelsea Manning and Snowden and um, Assange over in our neck of the woods are in trouble for, probably very similar. Uh, And From my understanding, I haven't haven't read the guy's work, but this journalist um, was primarily focused on highlighting corruption in the Russian government. Yeah, so, I mean, so. they probably love him. Uh, I'm sure he gets invited to all of the parties. When he was being arrested, the cops were like, oh, we're a huge fan of your work. Yeah, but we, um, I, I have it. to I have to beat you up now. Sorry. Yeah. So, to answer your question, it is happening here. The Globally, it's just perhaps not this, so is the, this is a reactionary moment where the, the strides that the world took forward in the 2000s and the first few years of the of the tens or the teens or whatever um the reactionary response to that is such that the globally we're seeing a rise in these right-wing conservative authoritarian ideologies and one of the things that right-wing conservatives like to do right-wing fascist ideologies like to do is oppress freedom of speech, the press, assembly, all of those things. And yeah. we're seeing the looking at Russia is is at this juncture all you all you're doing is just, you know, skipping ahead a few pages. That's all. Yeah, I mean, I'm not even sure if the parallel um there used to be a time where I would say like maybe that's a bit exaggerative or hyperbolic and they don't have the same government we do. Or you yada, think, yada, like, you think we're that far from Trump coming out and just starting to say shit like, you know, it seems like if there just wasn't a Congress that this would be a lot better. I can hear him now. I can hear him saying that it's a big shame. We elect these people. They never get anything done. We may as well just abolish it. I can just get stuff done. I'll do what's right for America because I know the best people. I think I'm, I think I'm doing the wrong accent, but yeah, I think you are. I think I was doing Bernie Sanders. I don't know. It was really weird. I, I guess the only um, political impression that I can do is a shitty Bernie Sanders. <laughs> uh, but I mean, I kind of, I kind of sk- accidentally skipped over a paragraph in my notes here, but the, the thrust of it was essentially that, yeah, like I don't think Trump himself, I don't think he's that far off. Um, I do think that, you know, he, all these things he does where he's attacking the media and all these other things, he's, he is undermining their legitimacy and, and paving the road to like, this sort of political oppression uh, and corruption and imprisonment, et cetera, all, you know, and it's going to start with journalism. It's going to start with attacks on freedom of the press. I don't think this was, 
um, that far off the board in the sense of what's happening in Russia. Like, I, I feel like this is probably pretty standard from the few articles I've seen. It's just unfortunate because it was so public this time. A lot of times, you know, they just kind of disappear in this case. Yeah, so I'm going to take the last word here and say, um, uh, I'm going to answer your question again. What? Oh, I found some statistics also. So, uh, oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> China and Japan may be as high as 99%, whereas uh, Canada is sitting about 97 The UK is about 80%. In the U.S., we're looking between 75 and 85 up until 92, and then after that, it went as high as 93% overall. So perhaps we were being a little hyperbolic. The oppression of the state is universal. Uh, yeah. And depending on the state and so on, it could be anywhere from 45 to 85%. Because I guess I, my thought and, was somewhere in the neighborhood of 60 to 75% would make the most sense, which would mean... You you would make Generally, the good the you would you good would make job. the good faith assumption that the authorities or the state whatever is probably right a little bit more than half of the time, but it leaves a large chunk for you know times when the when when they're wrong. Whereas with these margins, it's anything over ninety percent. It's it just seems like uh, it's way too far weighted in favor of the state. But then to see that. The UK is really the only one on that list that seems like it even has a, a rate that approaches that other than us. Yeah, uh, and 93%, I mean, I feel like I hear a lot of stories where um, people are, like, obviously guilty, and they get away with it. Well, no, you and know? we've talked about this, too. In states with the death penalty, we know that it's something like 4% are innocent. And, that, and after the fact, we find out that, oh, we just executed an innocent person. So Oops. the idea that that our penal system, our, our court system is 93 to 95 or whatever it is, percentage effective. That's a joke. That's a joke. Um, all right. So I want to end this because it's, it's, it's going on far too long. I want to answer your question from before one more time with feeling and say that, uh, not only is it already starting to happen here, but again, look at, look at who our friends are. Trump has praised Putin who is now, actively trying to jail journalists for uncovering corruption uh the north korea we I, we don't need to go into what they do to to dissidents when whenever there is one um we can talk about our best friends over in saudi arabia who are as we speak they're just trying to figure out like are we going to chop the heads off of these three moderate scholars in the public square they just can't choose uh th those are our good buddies such a hard choice and even other countries with deplorable records are coming out and saying like hey saudi arabia like you're gonna fuck up the, the jigs up like they're you're gonna uncover all of us and it's gonna be bad like don't execute <laughs> don't fucking execute moderate scholars have you lost your mind and saudi <laughs> arabia is just they just scream the war cry of idiot oppression monarchical religion and and go on and forward so all of those things are happening and we are friends with the people that are doing them or our president has praised the governments that are that are doing them and then we are beginning to commit admittedly you know different contextual uh instances of these things mm -hmm. but very similar uh types of plays being made by the by the u.s government and then when you bring in that we're slowly starting to normalize human rights atrocities like on the southern border because at this point if if you don't think that this is the test of like how far can we push it before the american people revolt then then you have your head in the fucking sand they've gotten lots of data from from the border about just how much human rights abuse the american public is willing to accept so so it's even more dystopian than I had feared. Yep, it is. So welcome to the fucking dystopia. Play the fucking music.